you are officially tuned in to the no bs guide to becoming her by the end of this video you will understand how to embody confidence before you get your dream body your dream job or your dream relationship as a matter of fact if i do my job you will see confidence as the way that you get those things it's not this feeling that you magically get after you've achieved what you wanted you can have it today like literally as you watch this video first things first we really need to demystify confidence even this title is a little bit misleading i'm not gonna lie this whole movement of becoming her you can just be her like the way to become her is to embody her right now literally everything in my life started changing for me when i stopped waiting to arrive to be the person that had all of the things that my perceived future self had so literally for the rest of this video i want you to ask yourself the version of me who has all of the things that i want what does she act like what does she look like? What does she dress like? What does she talk like? What are the thoughts that go through her head? Can I allow myself to embody that version of me before I even get there? That is the most efficient and effective way to quote unquote become her. Because as you embody her, you will start to attract all of the things that that version of you is supposed to have. As a matter of fact, in the absence of embodying her, you're just gonna keep pushing those things away because that dream apartment, that dream job, that dream body, that dream relationship is not a match to the version of you who is acting like she doesn't have it right now. So yes, before you pass go, before you collect $200, understand that confidence is a feeling. It's not a goal. It's something that you can give yourself right now in order to actually magnetize the goals that you want to achieve in your life. Trust me when I say the only thing that feels worse than being the version of you who doesn't have what you want is being the version of you who gets what you want on paper but doesn't feel the way you thought it would make you feel. I have been there and that is living proof that confidence is a feeling. Confidence is not this thing that is automatically attached to a goal. It is a feeling that you should and can give yourself right here and right now to expedite the process towards getting that goal and actually maintaining it and feeling good when you have it. Now that that's squared away and you have made the decision to feel confident today, one of the quickest ways to continue to build on that confidence is to improve your self-trust. Self-trust and self-respect and confidence really do go hand in hand. You have to first decide that you're gonna allow yourself to feel confident. So that's where number one comes in. But a close second is setting yourself up to keep promises to yourself. During the lowest period of my life, I was able to build so much confidence through this thing that I used to constantly tell myself, which is you promised. I would set these little goals or little promises and I would constantly deliver on those things. And the more that I delivered on those things, it's kind of like investing money into a bank where it just continues to grow. I felt like I was making these little investments in myself and it was just growing and growing and growing and my self-concept just started to grow as a result. And then this interesting thing would happen where when my internal narrator would try to be a bitch because that's just what she does sometimes. I would have so much evidence to be able to counter that voice in my head. I wouldn't just let her get away with saying things like, you're lazy, you're not disciplined, you're never gonna achieve your goals because I'd be able to be like, actually, do you remember what I did yesterday? You see this calendar in my room where I'm crossing off all these days that I'm going to the gym? You can't just say that about me because look, we have receipts that I'm not that person. We have proof that I'm keeping my promises to myself. There is evidence that I am worthy of respect because I treat myself like I'm worthy of respect. So not only would I look at myself differently, but unsurprisingly, I would not tolerate just any type of behavior from anybody. The things that I would tolerate in relationships, romantically or otherwise, I started to have a way higher standard because I had this little voice in my head like, no, no, look at how we treat ourselves. You're gonna take that from them. You're gonna let them talk to you like that you're gonna let them be inconsistent you're not inconsistent with yourself why would you allow that from somebody else now the point i want to make here this could be a double-edged sword absolutely make promises to yourself absolutely However, understand that there will be a consequence if you do not keep that promise to yourself. You will start to build evidence against what you're trying to do. You will start to create a case almost against yourself and your worthiness of respect. And so the number one piece of advice here, please, please take heed to this. Start small. I promise you your brain doesn't really know the difference between a tiny goal like making your bed and a huge goal like cleaning out your entire closet worth of seven years of clothes. Yes, one thing might feel rational like a bigger accomplishment but 
telling yourself that you're going to do something, even something as small as I'm going to make my bed when I wake up in the morning and knocking that out of the park because you can do that is going to make these little investments in your self-respect bank account. I want you to start small. By starting small, you'll give yourself these quick and simple wins, but you'll also start to respect and trust yourself enough to make those bigger promises to yourself. I'm warning you right now, if you have been kind of like in a rut and not in a great place when it comes to self-respect, it is very risky to make a big promise to yourself. Like if you literally are like, oh, well, you know, I've been in a rut. I haven't worked out in months. I don't feel good about myself. I have just had terrible habits, but tomorrow I'm starting 75 hard. Good luck, girl. All power to you. I will never discourage you. I will never be someone trying to prey on your downfall. In fact, I'm really trying to prey on your come up. And I understand that there might be this desire to go from zero to 100, but understand that the fall will be a lot harder. So my recommendation to you, and of course, you can always take it or leave it because you know yourself way better than I know you, is start small and build from there. Understand that if you are going to start large, if you're someone like me who doesn't really listen to what other people tell her, and I'm completely cool with that because I feel you, and you want to start large, like going to the gym four to five times a week, just understand that the consequence to that is if you do not deliver on it, you will actually work against your self-trust. It won't be the end of the world. You'll just have to rebuild it and you might have to start at square one where I'm telling you right now. I'm just trying to give you all the information and please do with it what makes the most sense for you. But the main point here is self-trust and self-confidence are like fraternal twins, okay? They really go hand in hand and they have this little telepathic type relationship. In order to appease one, you have to also appease the other. It is very important to be strategically vain. I know you didn't think we were gonna have a confidence video without talking about physical appearance because yes, Yes, that is important. I spent so much of my 20s trying to act like I was just above it and be like, well, confidence comes from within and how I look shouldn't really matter. Like if I'm truly confident, then I don't need external validation. I can just feel beautiful regardless how I look. I tried it so you don't have to. It didn't work. Don't get me wrong. I spent a lot of time focusing on my personality, focusing on my intelligence. I felt like it was a vain thing to care about, but literally I could not stop caring about it. And so that's why I'm here to let you know it is okay to care about how you look. It is okay. I wish I didn't put so much energy into fighting myself about that and just got more real about what that could look like and how I could be strategically vain in a way that still felt true to me because let's be real, I'm a Libra. I love pretty things. That's just part of my DNA and part of who I am. So what does being strategically vain mean? It means finding the looks that feel good for you. A lot of what's considered beautiful is trendy and also based in like stupid Western beauty standards that I personally don't subscribe to. So I'm not asking you to look at what other people say is beautiful and try to emulate that. That, that is literally a sure way to destroy your confidence. I am asking you to try your best to drown out the noise because there is a lot of noise and think about what are the looks that make you feel good. What are the hairstyles that make you feel good? What makeup looks can you experiment with if you like wearing makeup? Maybe you like the no makeup makeup look. Maybe you are someone who would rather just do some skincare, you know, brush up your eyebrows, put some lip gloss on and call it a day. What makes you feel beautiful? Honestly, I would also ask myself, like what doesn't make you feel beautiful? Like for me, if I just throw my hair up and it looks frizzy, it makes me feel self-conscious. I can spend the rest of my life trying to fight that and try to rewire my brain to not feel that way. Or I could just like put my hair in a slick back bun, which takes 50 15 minutes instead of 15 years with no real guarantee like I choose the 15 minutes route I don't know lately I've just been about the path of least resistance and that is definitely the most resistant for me another huge category within that for me was my clothes like there's certain things that are cute on Pinterest that when I wear them they don't make me feel good I feel big I feel confined they just don't look good on my body I was very resistant to that because a lot of those issues I thought were attributed just to my weight I don't remember what dawned on me I was doing this visualization where I embodied like the version of me who has what I want and I had this moment where I realized that even when I get my exact body goal that I want that I'm working towards as we speak there will be things that I take to the fitting room that even in that perfect body for me I will not feel good in I wanted to embody the version of myself who felt like that was something wrong with the clothes not me something so amazing happened now even in the absence of my dream body as I'm still working towards it that is how I feel I I feel like I try stuff on and if I don't like how it looks on me, I'm like, okay, well that's a Lululemon problem. That's a Nordstrom problem. Whoever designed these jeans just did not do a good job with the cut 
like the cut of these is just messed up and as funny as that is and as cute as that is it has really helped heal a lot of my body image issues but the main point that i'm making here is regardless there are going to be things that feel so good on you and there are going to be things that just don't do not force yourself and punish yourself by putting your body in things that don't make you feel like this confident version of yourself if you're anything like me your ability to show up as this confident person that you've decided to be is a lot a lot of the times dependent on how you feel in your body is dependent on how you feel in your clothes that day so give yourself full permission to go a size up or a size down if that's what you need wear the things that make it very accessible and easy for you to show up as this desired confident person that you want to be it takes trial and error i've been experimenting with my makeup looks and my hair looks for a couple of years and honestly it's been so fun like i felt good along the way but i've finally gotten it down to a place where i love it and i feel so confident in it and i'm sure when i look back on this video in a year or even in a few months i'll be like girl what were you doing why didn't you use this technique or why didn't you do that technique and instead of that being something that puts me down like it used to i actually just look at it as part of my evolution my style is changing my artist is changing and I want you to do the same have fun with this process don't look at it as this daunting thing where your self-talk starts to be see nothing looks good on you see you look fat in this see you don't know how to do your hair or makeup like really tune in on your self-talk to make sure that you're having fun throughout this process because this is a very intimate process I call it strategically vain I don't actually think it's vain I think it's fun I think it's cute but part of that is also I feel like I've neutralized the word vain so that if anyone calls me that, I know that I'm not and I don't actually care anymore. If it's vain or if it's not vain, I don't care. All I know is that it makes me feel good and I have a lot of fun doing it and so it's here to stay. So embrace everything that comes with that process because it's between you and you and it can be fun if you just let it. The purest form of confidence comes from the understanding that how you feel about you ultimately matters the most. Don't get me wrong, you can project confidence just using the tips that I gave you leading up to this point, but if you want to cultivate real confidence like that confidence when you're all alone in your room looking in the mirror that feeling that you have when you think about you as a person if you want to cultivate that real real confidence that will shine through no matter how you look really you need to get very friendly with that voice in your head this is not an all or nothing thing like you've spent decades with this voice in your head and it has certainly picked up some toxic things along the way you're not gonna get rid of those things overnight or maybe even ever so it's less about editing that voice in your head as if it were like a google doc and it's more about having a conversation with it like you would a friend don't let it get away with saying mean things about you like ask questions that's kind of where that self-trust piece comes in where it's like you suck you're never gonna succeed and then you can talk back and be like well didn't you see what we did yesterday how do you explain that and then it'll be like oh, she talks she speaks i can't just get away with talking anymore and you'll literally start to have an ongoing friendly but firm conversation with that voice in your head and these thoughts will no longer turn into your beliefs because there will be a dialogue and a filtering process that kind of has to happen before those things translate into beliefs which then translate into your actions before they can become beliefs which really is what drives your confidence you want to have a really strong dialogue with that voice in your head and steer it in the direction you want it to go so much of my adulthood has has been about learning how to do this. I am learning this every single day. I am practicing it every single day. And only with this heightened awareness am I able to realize like how toxic things did get for a while before I created this little dialogue and friendship between the voice in my head and myself. And the biggest lesson that it has taught me really is that once you start to persuade and influence that voice in your head where you guys are on the same page about how you wanna feel about you, something so freaking powerful happens you will start to realize that everyone else's voices were not actually holding power over you in fact the only reason you even had any type of reaction to or feeling about the way other people felt about you is because that internal voice kind of agreed with them and if you can strengthen your internal narrator to where you feel you know how you feel about how you look you know how you feel about how you perform your job or about certain personality traits that you have so that when somebody tries to say something that counters that you actually don't care because you have you on your side you and your voice in your head are best friends and 
you guys are just side eyeing them like that's what you think i don't even have time to convince you otherwise because i actually don't care you start to realize that all that time and energy that you were spending trying to get people to see you for who you are was actually just you trying to see yourself a specific way you were projecting that onto other people when all along all you have wanted was to see yourself in a positive light those people making fun of you for being single or fat shaming you or making fun of your job that will not matter to you anymore once you are at peace with those things if you feel good about those things nothing anyone says honestly positively or negatively is going to impact you or pull you in one direction or the other because you're standing on two feet in alignment with you and that voice in your head you've already decided how you want to feel about your life so no one can sway you on that that's real confidence that is that truly unshakable confidence that you really can't get from anywhere else like it's organic you can't play with it you can't touch it that is that pure confidence so if you want that pure truly unshakable confidence that emanates from the inside out get friendly with that voice in your head she's not always going to be in a good mood and that's okay but the key here is that you guys are on such great terms that she can tell you how she's feeling even if how she's feeling isn't something you want to hear and you can have that conversation and there's kind of this consensual agreement of what you're going to choose to believe don't let her bully you don't let her do the thing that she's doing right now where everything she thinks about you turns into a belief and then informs your behaviors. Once you become best friends with that person, you'll start to move that internal narrator in the direction that serves you and nothing anyone ever says about you is going to matter. I truly believe though, if you want to enter like the top 1% of people who are confident, I'm trying to get there. It's in an understanding that you were put on this earth to feel good and do good. Now this one is definitely more spiritual in nature. So regardless how you feel about religion, about God, this one does require faith. This understanding that God has your back, the creator has your back, and that you were put here, that you were put here for a unique reason, to do and feel good. And it doesn't have to be this crazy invention or crazy revolution that you bring about, but it's this understanding that nobody else can touch that but you and God. This is a conversation between you and the creator that nobody else can interfere with. I think about this a lot whenever I'm comparing myself or comparing my journey and then I realize like in order for me to question myself I would also be questioning God and I don't question God. I mean sometimes I do and that's okay as well but I generally believe, I generally have faith because that's something that has just guided so much of my life and added so much meaning it has not led me astray and to this day not only has it not led me astray but it has actually been a better plan than the one that i thought i wanted like there were so many things in my life that i thought i wanted that had i gotten those things i would be a significantly less confident and happy version of myself today once you see enough of that and experience enough it incentivizes you to trust kind of like how you build self-trust i've built that trust with god because i've seen over and over that i have not been let down in fact i've been so pleasantly surprised now i am a firm believer that everybody has their own relationship to god how you choose to talk to god and pray is none of my business and vice versa and i actually love that exclusivity because nothing has healed my self-confidence and self-trust more than knowing that we all have god on speed dial nobody has exclusive rights to god nobody has exclusive access to god we we each have equal and equitable access to this source, this figure that is meant to guide us and help us when we're struggling and help us when we're not struggling. Some of the most magical moments for me have been when I'm all alone in my room crying, feeling lost, feeling confused, and just praying to God in whatever way I choose to pray. This isn't me trying to intrude or to tell you how to cultivate that relationship. We have way more than enough people doing that and you will never catch me telling you how to have faith. What I am telling you though is whether you choose to exercise that right or not, it should make you feel special and confident and even protected knowing that that is an option equally available to you as it is to everybody else. As someone who grew up battling a lot of shame, I realized a lot of my self-confidence issues were really just me not feeling like I was good enough for God. 
Like that was literally, I know that sounds so crazy to say maybe, but I realized a lot of my internal, like really deep self-confidence issues were me feeling like there was something wrong with me. So once I realized that, I didn't start talking to God right away because I still felt this like distance. But just understanding that that was an option for me changed the way I started to see myself. Like it snapped me back to reality and it helped me see that like all these BS indicators of worth and of importance that we've placed as humans, that's not how God sees us. God doesn't care what your body looks like. God doesn't care how many followers you have, how much money you make. Like the fact that I had access to this source that sees me and someone with, who makes way more money than I do or who's accumulated more social media followers or whose career just seems so much more important than mine. The fact that God sees that person and me as equals. The fact that in God's eyes, we are equally supposed to be on this earth. Our stories, our purpose is equally important. That just started to heal the way that I saw myself. As I started to heal that image, I started to feel like God was more and more accessible. And then I finally started talking to God and asking for guidance. And now that I see God giving me guidance in my life, I feel like there's this little inside joke that nobody else is in on. And the same goes for you. This isn't me telling you that you need to talk to God every night and you need to pray and you need to do this and you need to fast. You're not gonna get that from me ever. What you will get from me is an understanding that none of us have died and gone to heaven to report back onto earth as to who's right and who's wrong. As someone who grew up with a lot of shame and messaging about who's right and wrong and who's good and bad, that realization not only gave me so much confidence, but it gave me so much permission to do it my way and to really alter that voice in my head to be one that is in tune with God in, no, in a way that no one else can be. Like me and God have our own conversation and it's a secure line. It's none of your business, just like your conversations with God are none of my business. At the end of the day, when all is said and done, the only person who's gonna be able to look back on this life and figure out whether you were happy with the way that you lived it is you. I am now more confident than I have ever, ever, ever been in my life. And I am convinced that it's this fifth tip that I just gave you that is helping me deepen an already really deep connection that I have with myself. Don't get me wrong. The confidence that you might be looking for, my love, you can achieve that right now with just the first three tips that I told you. Tips four and five, I will say, take a little bit longer and require more active effort. They're not just something that you build one time and they're just there to stay. Like you will always have new obstacles, new things happening in life and you need to get on the same page with that voice in your head and you need to get on the same page with God. Those are two tools that I'm actively using every single day to take my confidence to the next level, to be the person who not just emanates this positive energy and, and has like a powerful presence presence when I walk into a room, but I'm now somebody that other people constantly give that feedback to right away. Like there's just something about you or you just seem like you have this peace about yourself or you give me this feeling of calmness. And I truly, truly, truly believe that I was only able to exude that type of energy when I started getting on the same page with myself and with God. Look, I know that these weren't your average glow up tips, but it wouldn't be a Rima video if it was average. I try to really think about the things that are not as frequently talked about and talk about those. I'd love to hear anything that this brought up for you, any stories that you have, or any questions that this has left you with. I love you so much. And as always, stay powerful, my love.